in your packet um, that was granted uh, in 1994. And what's unusual, at least I've never experienced that before, is that petition to vacate asked to vacate half of that area. Okay? And so this, that is the southern half, I believe. And so this petition to vacate is asking for the other half. So uh, it's unusual from that perspective. One of the things I always point out when we get a petition to vacate is that it's important to keep in mind the city is not giving property. The city is merely vacating its public right to use this. So we are not making ever ever making any guarantees, warranties, or promises what that means for the adjacent homeowners. When we say typically the adjacent homeowners claim to the center of the vacated area, that's just typically what happens under Indiana property. We're never in the position of warranting for any particular case what's going to happen in this case. So I think it's, it's somewhat ambiguous if this is granted. It's somewhat ambiguous what the result is. And I think that's for the neighboring property owners to discuss. I think there's a letter of objection in here from uh, some adjacent property owners from uh, attorney Catherine Knoll. Um, and, uh, but I won't speak to... That's her name. Uh, I'm sorry, am I looking at her again? I'm sorry. Yes, you're looking at the wrong one. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. sorry. I, 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 I was looking at the one you canceled. Okay. Um, the, uh, uh, when anyone requests a petition to vacate, yes, that's typically what happens, uh, uh, is that uh, neighbors from both sides, as a matter of property law, claim to the center. The, uh, there's nothing in the law that prohibits you from granting it. Granting a vacation does require the passage of ordinance. There's nothing requiring that you uh, um, uh, grant it, it's not entitlement. Um, there's nothing requiring that they be here. As long as you have the public hearing and the public's had an opportunity to speak to it, you can determine uh, uh, to pass the ordinance. It can die for lack of vote or lack of second, or lack of motion, I'm sorry, or lack of second, or it can uh, fail to get the required votes. All of those are options when it comes to a petition to vacate. So who was the beneficiary in 94? 94 was the other petition, I'm sorry. That doesn't apply. That's the one that's withdrawn. That's the one that's withdrawn. I, I oh, okay, all right, okay, all right. So, We're looking at so in this case, it would be a half and so half, yes, half, and half gain, right? That is typical of, again, that's okay. typical of property law. The city doesn't make any warranties about what happens when it vacates the property. It's not the city's business what happens. Okay. Does anybody have any comment to this? I don't know everyone out there, but does anybody have knowledge of this vacation request? Okay. I'm representing my mother on it. You're representing your mom? Yes. Oh. Okay. So, do you have anything you need to suggest or add or comment on? Uh, me and the neighbors both talked about it and we're both okay with it. The city is. I mean, it doesn't get used that much. And okay. So, Andy, I, do we just go ahead with a, a motion to vacate? Well, you need to close the public hearing if, first. If there's no more public comment. Okay, is there any? I, I would just say, he said he represented his mother, but he didn't say who he was or who yeah, he was. I need his name. I'm sorry, I'm Timothy J. Shelton. What now? Okay. Timothy J. Thank you. Shelton. Okay. This Thank was you. an alleyway, right? Was it an alleyway? Yes. Okay. It's like it's not an unmaintained one. Unmaintained one. So you guys already maintained it yourselves, yes. right? Okay. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. It's been moved and seconded by uh, Brian and John. So all in favor say aye. Aye. Now do we need a, we need a motion to vacate? Come we have an What's he doing? Behind his house? Who's the second? Who's the second? All in favor say aye. It's in the... Uh,
2024 ordinance vacating public drive part of East West Drive within the original and subsequent class in the city of Rochester, Indiana. Yeah. <clears throat> motion to approve those. I motion to approve. Amy moves. Three seconds. All in favor, raise your right hand. 7 0. Yeah. Okay, very good. Thank you. on the chicken. We are not going to vote on it. We don't have an ordinance drawn up. Uh, I know there's some that have some further comment on that, so I want to give you time to comment on the uh, possibility of putting chickens in the in the city. So does anybody have any uh, discussion they want to uh, be heard? Thank you. Pam? To talk about the chickens. Basically, what I just gave you it gives you an idea of that I was in real estate here for 46 years, both as a selling real estate and as an appraiser. Uh, I don't know too many things, but I do know zoning and I know real estate. And so I'm not going to read my resume there. It was just something for you to, to have. Uh, and I wanted to talk basically on when the city had its zoning. Just so I was on the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals and the Planning Commission, and we went together with the, the county and merged, and there was a comprehensive plan that was written, and I've given you four <coughs> examples of what that was, but really what the plan was for is so that we had uh, similar areas where certain properties could be used, like downtown uh, residential, or, or residential, like residential, uh, industrial, commercial. And at the bottom of that, I'm just going to kind of talk to you about how you value property. And that is, there's three types of depreciation. One is physical, one is functional, and one is external. And the physical and the functional can be either curable or it can be incurable. If, for example, you have peeling paint in your house, floor coverings that need to be fixed, if the cost to do that is less than the value of you give your property, then it's curable. Functional loss really has to do with where the location of the rooms are inside a piece of property. 
there was a house on Logansport once, and when I went in the front door, there was a living room. And to the left of the living room, you walk through to the dining room. And then be, behind the dining room is the kitchen. And off the dining room to the right was a bath, a full bath. And upstairs were three bedrooms. But when they came down from the bedrooms, they had to turn left to go into that bathroom. They couldn't go into the living room. So that was a lot of functional loss in that piece of property. The curable or incurable, I was going to take up an enormous amount of value for that property because you had to walk through the bathroom to get to the downstairs. Either stay upstairs or walk through the bathroom. But if they put an opening in that living room wall, it would cure that. So the cost of that was less than what I was going to appreciate that property. And external loss is always, always incurable because it's somebody else's property and you can't fix it. If you allow chickens in single family residential areas, you will be lowering the value of that property in subdivisions and at the lake. The lake really, I sit on the tax board, and it's the biggest tax base we have in the city. And really, Manitou Heights is, is number two. But chickens, I've appraised enough properties. One time I, I looked at a piece of property in Knox, Stark County, and I asked the gentleman when I got there, I said, what did you do, let your chickens out? Because he knew I was coming. There were tons of them all over the yard. And there was a 12-foot fence. And he said, now they can just get out. They don't know lot lines. And if you're ever around a chicken coop and people don't keep it clean and it gets wet, they stink. And you're going to smell that quite a ways from your own property. If you allow chickens in residential areas instead of out in agricultural areas, you will really diminish the value of property. If, if I, when I was teaching real estate, I said to people, every time I thought about, well, how do you figure how much loss there would be for external loss? And I always thought if there was 100 people, how many people would live next to that? And I'm telling you, if you were to sell single-family homes in this community, I'm going to tell you that probably 95 to 97 percent of the people will not live next to somewhere where there's chickens next door. So don't do that. <laughs> I'd answer any questions you have. Thanks, Bill. And then the second thing, I just gave you something, and I, I wanted to know. It has to do with trailers and campers on city streets. And I've given you pictures at the end there that'll show you what you can see when you back out of a driveway, which is relatively nothing when there's a big trailer there. And, and campers as well. So uh, I'd mark some <coughs> spots maybe for your attorney to take a look at. And I'd be glad to talk to you about it at some other time when you want to know the agenda. But it needs to, like you've done, done something with golf carts, you've done something with, you know, the lady that couldn't, uh, you, know, the, you know, they wouldn't pick up her leaves. You can, you can redo an ordinance really quickly. And I do, I did mark where I think you could have recreational vehicles, campers, that's very much But that was yesterday for attorney. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anybody else want to get a few part of the chicken discussion? I guess my question would be how many chickens would diminish a property? If you only have three or you only have an ordinance of four, they're not that awful to be around. I mean, we're not talking having roosters. Most of the ordinances I read are in the vicinity of five or six max. Exactly. Because I also provided it last time I was here as well. But why, like, how much would that diminish a property just having a maximum of six? And you do have a chicken coop, and you do require a fence around the area. Yeah, well, unfortunately, I, whoever your new compliance officer is, they've got a lot of work to do. Because I can tell you, going up and down the streets, what what's not in compliance, they already have an ordinance for. Four chickens, six chickens, one chicken is going to diminish the value of the property. Uh, not only just the smell and, and that they can get out in my yard or anybody else's yard, but they do bring with it uh, raccoons, they bring coyotes, they bring things that can get in residential areas but aren't typical there. 
but the ordinance of animals does say that you can have an unlimited amount of animals less than a pound so I can have a hundred rats at my house release them and disrupt the public I, rats because anything less than a pound there is no ordinance on so I mean and that's what I'm saying I mean I can find a bigger nuisance than a chicken I mean, I'm tired of getting a notice on my door saying, have you seen this specific cat? No. Yeah, because that cat was let loose. So, and I mean, we get that every six months. So, what's, I mean, what's the difference of that rather than, say, a chicken? And I mean, I'm, either way, I don't really care. Well, the city has an ordinance already that you can only have two dogs up to two dogs in the city. Three dogs. Three dogs. Three dogs. Well, yeah. three dogs or two cats. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, if you had three dogs, you couldn't have the two cats. Yeah. Ma'am, could we get your name for the record? Jennifer Braxton. I'm the Roberts. Oh, okay. oh I thought you were the Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you're going to speak, would you mind giving your name first so I can get it in the record? Thank you. I mean, I'm just saying, and as he, as the mayor said last time, we could also get the neighbors to sign. Granted, our neighbor just moved, so ours would be a new neighbor now. But, I mean, if you are, granted, not a lot of people take care of their animals. I get that. But if you have a regiment cleaning, that can also help your garden area if you have those garden beds that are up. It can help your grass grow. It can, I mean, chickens can also help the bugs too. I did live in the country, we did raise chickens. Um, and they did help with all the bug problem as well. But I mean, I know going down Pontiac Street, you hear all the dogs, you hear, you see all the loose cats, you see all this. And I know you mentioned diseases. There's been 12 cases of diseases in the state of Indiana since 2022. And we are the number, we are the second most, the second state to produce the most eggs. So it is also educational to have these type of animals as well, especially for the youth, especially since the 4-H population has declined. Now it's going up because of the simple fact that my generation has their kids going into 4-H. So I mean, it does open up a broad spectrum of things as well. And I will say when they made a comprehensive plan, they, they looked at that and that's why they have agricultural zones. Yeah, but okay. College student, I have my MBA. I mean, I'm loaded down with student loan debt. I can't go right now and buy a house out in the country because the property prices have increased significantly. I mean, that's just how it is. Some people cannot do that financially. Um, so, as, yeah, as a point of reference, so uh, I approached Trent related to the subject because there is a large amount of um, robust conversation related to that. I'd also been asked to reach out to the Indiana uh, Department of, or Board of Animal Health, as well as the um, local um, animal shelter to obtain information, which was all enlightening. Um, obviously, if this was decided, there is favorable information and unfavorable information. So I think that's too subjective to make a decision. So I circle back around with Trent and asked if I could do a simple just beta test survey using the survey monkey to throw it out there on if you knew you grew up in Rochester just to get a little inkling of what it would be. And when I did the survey, <coughs> I did not put it in any specific realm, I just called it the chicken interest survey. Um, and all I stated was backyard chickens should be allowed in the city of Rochester. I did not skew the results. I did not skew the, the language. Um, and oddly enough, we are half and half with the initial. So we have half, um, actually it's four more that are disagreeable towards it than are agreeable. So right now, honestly, I wasn't, a, it's not an academic survey I did, but currently, in my opinion, it is so close and there is so much work to be done. I, um, I honestly feel like that unless we, unless this council felt like 
they wanted to do more of a robust survey, it really is too close for us to put a lot of effort and time into it right now. Not that never, but it is, I mean, honestly, the, the, what we had discussed was we are, we hold into the taxpayers, all of them, right. chicken lovers and chicker, chicken people who are not chicken people and agnostic chicken people, which I am an agnostic, I don't, neither way. Um, but right now, looking at just a inkling of a survey, it appears that the results say that the community is completely in half related to this. And to me, that feels like it's too close to put a lot of effort and time into it. But that's just my opinion. Like I said, I am agnostic related to chickens, but I just think that we represent all the taxpayers. I think what I would suggest is uh, this council be prepared uh, next meeting to uh, vote either to proceed with looking at an ordinance for it or vote against pursuit of proceeding on it is what I would add to one have more maybe some more data to look at but that's what I should suggest at this time be prepared to make a decision next month on whether to go forward with an ordinance or not. So we want people to be unfair and say we didn't make this right. readily well, and then one I only saw the survey yesterday and I'm on Facebook constantly. Yeah. So I don't think that's fair because well, I don't think that's it's not very it far. Was a, it was a beta test. Time. It wasn't right. meant to be like something scientific. It was just to have some data here to at least start the conversation right. or direct it. So Right. I'm just saying for me personally, I only saw it yesterday. Yeah, I, yeah well that's why we're going to the thirty days. Well you but, might want to check with real estate agents who really are selling pieces of property here. Yeah. They'll tell you whether they think it's a good idea or not. Yeah. All right, we're going to Phil I'm not here for this reason, but I don't think you have chickens in, in, in the city limits. It just doesn't make sense to me. Why, why have chickens in, in town? I just don't see it. Then why have birds inside? Okay. Well, well, I, appreciate I mean, that's where we're going to go with. Well, I know. I appreciate your comments. We're not going to spend the whole evening on this. Believe me, we've got a ton of stuff that's yes. precedent over that. So, uh, appreciate your comments. Appreciate your views. We'll spend another. Let's, to be fair, since. To be fair, let's just give it one more time. Uh, you know, I, I, I know our minds are. Well, go ahead. well, I. I, I believe. I'm with Pam Fish. I mean, as far as where I'm coming from on this approach, it's just not, I, I'm not going to get there with chickens. Okay. So if that saves anybody some time, I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm with five animals. It's, you guys decide if you want to vote on it tonight, that's fine. It's up to you. Well, if there's no motion to create a resolution to allow chickens, Everybody, I think you should wait the, until next month just to give give more information and everything instead of just some people will call this railroading it. And you don't want to railroad this. That's, that's my we opinion. Have, we have been on that chicken issue for yes, this is many, many, that's fine. Many, many, yeah. many okay. years. Okay. <coughs> and, and it has been and the, the people that I have contacted me, I, I have not got one positive response. <laughs> And I do receive phone calls, and I do, and I talk to people in town, and I have not gotten anybody to say, "Oh yes, I would love it if my neighbor had chickens." No one has said that. They've all said, "You got to be kidding me." And I am, like Bobby said, I agree with what Pam said wholeheartedly, but I have been against the chickens for 14 years now. So that's where I was. <coughs> I'm a little late to Angela Miller. I'm a little late to me. I'm her mother, Jennifer Branson's mother. Um, I'm a little late because I had to take my grandson's poultry to get a blood test. Um, for Salmonella polinium, 
which is eradicated in the United States, but they still blood test it. And the same thing can be done here. Now it's avian flu. But I hear mallard ducks are carriers. Are we going to shoot all the mallard ducks on the lake because they're carriers? What are we doing? Are, are the geese and the ducks, is that population thinned down on the lake? They enjoy their poultry on the lake. They watch the little babies follow their mothers in the springtime. So there's not like going to be a million people go out and buy chickens, you know, however many there may be okay. That's just not going to happen. not apples and apples. They're in their habitat. Huh? The city is not the habitat of a chicken. So that's not apples to apples. It's not a really good comparison. So you're saying the lake should, if it's determined that mallard ducks definitely are carriers for the avian flu, what is That's the city going to do DNR. to protect We don't have citizens. jurisdiction over that on the lake. They, they, it's the not DNR. part of this. Uh, it's part of the city, but the DNR controls what we do on that lake. Am I incorrect? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So well, we don't have Especially with wildlife. Yeah. Okay. In fact, there are efforts to control them as well out there. So. I mean, honestly, there could be arguments on both sides. That, uh, we're never going to win the arguments because everyone's got a strong opinion, right? And I think it goes back to just the practical. I don't think anybody's <coughs> wanting to be disrespectful or say your opinion's wrong or Brian's right or we're all wrong and everyone's right. I think it goes back to the practicality nature of is it the best decision for the city of Rochester for all <coughs> residents, right? And so. No one wants to take away property rights or American freedom, but I think we have to be very cautious of what we allow in the city dependent upon all residents. So I know some people will be really disappointed and are disappointed because they, they really want chickens, but I think we have to look at the current climate of what the community is and then make a decision based on that fact. Because we can argue back and forth, but it's really not super productive. I'm not trying to be rude, but you know, I just think that we have to, we are all in this together. We're a community together. There are chicken lovers and chicken haters and agnostic chicken people. So we just have to figure out what makes the most sense. I, uh, I'm gonna go with what John said. This, if, had this, Phil, had this been the first time we've been presented, I, I, I would agree that to make a decision tonight would be kind of that way. But, like you said, this is not new to this council. That's every right. year, every couple of years, you know. So, council, you decide: is there a motion to be made to pursue an ordinance for allowing chickens? No. I'm interested in allowing more like insight, just because I don't want anybody to say that we are unfair. But I don't think that we're going to do. The problem with that is I think that the council, we are, we feel strongly about it, so it would probably be a wasted experiment. Yeah, so you're you're okay with yeah, I mean, I think not going that forward, or that, if nobody's it. making a motion, we're okay. Just okay, we're we're tabling that then. So okay, next item, uh, rabbits. Um, and I, I wanted I thought Heather was going to be here because that's Andy. We talked a little bit about this. That kind of becomes a zone thing. That's correct or a uh, well, what part of it are we discussing exactly? Well, I don't know. <coughs> Rabbits are considered in the zoning department a pet and a farm animal. So they're in both. But it also is like, we're talking about the five animals per exactly. residence. If she's making a request for the council to grant an exception, uh, uh, a permit for, for uh, uh, more than the normal number of animals, yes, that, that is certainly a council issue. The council can do that. So, and you want... Give me a number you're looking at. Like 20. 20 if max. That, yeah, 20 max. And they'd be in cages? Or they would that? be in cages. As I proposed the last time, they would also be in a shed. And I would also plan on getting the yard around the shed fenced. Okay. So we're, we're giving an exception over the five to allow her to have 20, up to no more than 20 rabbits in the conditions. Uh, facility she's described. Um, thoughts, comments. Bill? Is this the same kind of discussion with the chicken? If you're not going, if you don't like the chickens, then why would you want the rabbits? Or if you want the rabbits, why don't you want the chicken? That's the way I'm seeing it. Just being here the first time. I think something. 
to consider two things on this. Do you want her to allow? Do you want to allow her to have more than five animals? But then also, what is a farm animal? Mm -hmm. So no farm animals in town. So I'm going to decide if it's rabbits or farm animal. If not, can she have more than one? Yeah, sorry. And, and we're going down a slippery slope here. <laughs> I mean, it's unless I'm looking at that wrong. No, no, I think I think that's a, re a relevant issue. But since it's already written in the statute that way. They can grant the permit and be silent on that. Okay. And the chips will fall where they may. Right. But yes, they could also say, we make it part of our motion. Uh, we, we did not request for more, but we pass a motion declaring that we interpret it that they're not farm animals. Right. They can do that as well. So, yeah. Zoning is supposed to not take the liberty away from people living there. The whole purpose of zoning is really to protect the, the area. It's not to harm somebody from using their own property. But there's all sorts of requirements for zoning. There's zoning where you can't open a, you can't have an open fire in the city limits. Whether you pay your taxes or not, it's not to harm the person who lives up on that property, but it's to protect the integrity of the neighborhood. And that's why you have limits on animals. There's probably 20 rabbits that go on the outside of my fence every day. Uh, but I don't want them in my yard because they don't want to harm my dog. So. But zoning isn't to harm her, but when you live in an area where you have zoning requirements, you, you have to abide by those. And it isn't to harm anybody, it's to, to make the, the neighborhood conform to one another, and that really gives you the highest and best use for your property. You know, when, when I appraise property, not only do they want the front, the back, and the interior photos, they want to know what the side looks like from each, you know, from each direction, so that the lender of a piece of property can see what's around there. And when you live in single-family zoned areas, you need to keep it single-family with not a bunch of animals around. And I, I share Pam's view right down the line. I mean, I hate it that the individual can't have what they want. I understand that, you know. But in, as, as a whole, we have to be considerate of the Well, the hardest thing, as I said, to sit on any board is to tell people that you like, no. I know. And, and I, I hate that, too. So, your thoughts? Uh, anybody else have anything to consider um, on the rabbit thing tonight? Or? I feel that that's the too. beverage that can be taken out of the bar or restaurant they have to fill out this form so I've got six seven of the nine and I have two more here so well that's, that's I counted her so I've got seven of okay. the nine establishments already have this form filled out and showing <clears throat> showing that they're favorable and moving yeah. forward if we were to actually put the ordinance together and the other two I, it's not that I have I don't have them because they're not favorable I just we haven't gotten them yet 
So um, the green area is was an extensive conversation that we had. Um, we were attempting to determine if it made sense to allow an area in which special event permits could be done. So for example, if Brett from the day of landing wanted to come and during an event um, set up an, an application in the Dora to be able to um, sell maybe his barbecue and a beer together, um, then that could be possible. So after much conversation, we determined that um, having it as far away from the restaurants here in the park, generally for purposes of events, um, would be something that the Dora team would be in favor of. So this is, we're not passing anything tonight. We aren't making any per se decisions. This is just for you to visually see what the suggested areas are. Um, in addition, um, we have um, obtained the um, logistics side of things. So for individuals who are concerned with folks walking into their business, let's say they are not in favor, but they find themselves in the Dora, then we will have a nice decal sticker in which it will be, uh, Julie came up with a cute idea of having it in the form so it is easily identifiable, either a beer mug or a wine glass, and says Dora friendly, so they will have that. That will identify that the business is willing to allow individuals to walk into their business. Um, if somebody does not have that, that would indicate that the um, individual business would not like them to walk in. So we don't want any fights or arguments, so that was the way to handle that. Um, <clears throat> as well as a sticker that would be available for um, designated permittees that do not want any outside um, adult beverages brought in. So it will say no outside um, adult beverages allowed in this premises, so they don't have to fight or argue with people either. Um, Trying to make it easy, these are all suggestions from the City of Logan Sports, um, as well as kind of identified and um, uh, massaged here with our current team. Um, the signs would be on both all, I think there's two exits for each of the businesses, so the exit signs would be on both sides. Um, eight and a half by 11. Um, we decided to do a decal if we move forward, got getting pricing. I do have some pricing um, in an email um, related to that. Uh, Alyssa has graciously offered to um, work with her vendor to provide um, a design for a cup and to help us to get pricing for that. I did meet with the Rochester Downtown Partnership um, this morning, the board, and they preliminarily approved preliminarily because obviously lots of other work has to be done, but if um, we do move forward, they would be the um, holder of the cups. It would be a fundraiser for them, so they would buy the cups, and then yeah, this is all pending everything, but we want to have as much worked out. Um, they would buy the cups, and then they would resell them, and it would be a, a fundraiser for them, as well as um, the map that we would have for the QR code that would identify where the door is for each people to identify that would be um, on their website. So um, I talked to Dwayne, he is not here tonight, but he has identified um, 11 different locations in which he would like to put the conspicuous signs that it states in the legislation. And he has identified the poles in which he would like to put those on if we do move forward. So um, much detail has been determined as requested in between meetings. Um, and then the, the pricing looks like the signs um, for the quantity that we were asking um, is 120 for the no, uh, adult beverage signs, aluminum street signs um, would be 340, um, door friendly um, tags would be 110. Um, so that's where we're at. So do you need any action from the council tonight or just update I just, the it's any other input or insight before we, because what we had decided in the night that we would invest, that we would move things forward and put a formal package and less. Just a question on why are the buildings directly at the 29th and 8th Street directly west of the courthouse? Very yellow, but the next block where Webb's is, the buildings are not, you know, I know the sidewalk is, but 
there are no committees in either of those blocks. So why one yellow, one not yellow? Good question. So this area right here was shown as kind of an event area, the uh, area of uh, A Street and that Main Street where that is, um, with that area where the vendor location is. Um, that would give those businesses as well the opportunity to host uh, after hours, which those are more likely. Terry Webb in that block said they did not want to be part of it. So people can walk by um, so that for ease of um, walking up and down the sidewalks, but um, those buildings that are there um, have indicated either with no interest or um, have said that they do not want to be part of that. So I can circle back around and talk to the ones I have not actually discussed if that would be available from there. But, so that was what I think Trent had discussed asking me to get the comps for so that we can determine that. So that was one of the um, questions that they're asking me. I said, you don't have, you don't have any idea who's going to pay for it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well I, would, no. I would just think the businesses would be paying for their own. They would be paying for their own signage, I think. Didn't we talk about that? They no, we did not talk. You just said oh. to get the cost okay. and that you wanted okay. to have a discussion here related to that. I would think the businesses would pay for their own signage, for sure. I, don't, I, I hope the city doesn't pay for any of it. How much of it? Uh, let's see. Uh, well, that's the question. Well, I the sign is, at, it looks like, uh, I mean, so I talked to the council person from the city of Warsaw and um, just to ask about that because we had not determined that. And I asked how they could handle that just for in case the person has a question like that. Um, and he had indicated that the city was uncomfortable with paying for the starter kit. So they had asked for the businesses to split the cost of the starter kit. Um, the city of Logansport is paying for a starter kit. So two different versions, but Warsaw was not uh, comfortable with using taxpayer dollars to pay for the starter kit for um, each of the uh, businesses. Uh, uh, honestly, you know, the reason we're doing this is to benefit the businesses as well. So, you know, I think there should be some level on them anyway. Don't you? I, I could have honestly, I think they, have, they should carry the full burden of it. They should not be as the city's responsibility or taxpayer's responsibility to pay for you can bring your beer in or something. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't go along with that. Okay, we'll be updated next time. Okay. Your so along. I will, um, I'll discuss that with the steering committee related to the cost and how we can pursue all of that. And then as I think I'm going to ask those additional businesses and then we'll have um, more of the, um, the template. <coughs> Andy, do we think that we can get that ready for July? If, or, yeah, I think so. Okay. <clears throat> all right, yes. Uh, uh, Andy, did you talk to anybody? Anybody with, from the county uh, the courthouse property there? Yeah, they, in yellow. Uh, so I am going to follow up with them before we do that because we did not talk to them about the sidewalks, but we do have to have a safe place for people to walk, which was what the discussion point was. So they do not want their lawn to be used, which was the discussion point, nor this area over here that's an open area, yet they have shared that if the DORA is successful, they would consider us passing a, a second ordinance, which you can't do, for a special event area only used for special events. But they want to see how the first ordinance goes before they are willing to address that. But they did share specifically not the lawn, specifically not the lot in which there will be music. Um, at this point, they are not willing to do that, which is fine. And I, I know that the parking around the courthouse is not subject to the city's uh, parking limits, parking requirements. So that may be something else to look at too. As far as that. As to not have any parking, or not, not include the, where the parking is around the courthouse, not include that in the yellow at all. <laughs> You mean on 8th Street? On the, the south, south side of 8th Street and then the, the, the east side, side of Main. Oh, then that would exclude the park, the, the <coughs> sidewalk. I, I can't. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you, that's I'm asking if we if you so, coordinate that with the county. Yes, the, uh, Amy has been talking to the county. And okay. part of our uh, concept is, is that as you're out there going from establishment to establishment, um, and you happen to have a Dora cup in your hand, 
and you see somebody and you cross the street. Well, now you can get in trouble because you just happen to be on 8th Street where you're heading to another door establishment and you see somebody over there. So do we want this so strict that that you can't go over there with your glass and, and talk to somebody that's in a vehicle? And that was kind of the purpose of if you're walking down 8th Street to another establishment, include both sidewalks it was a safety thing brian but i will i will follow up and add your request and just discuss that yeah we're just trying to make sure that we think of all of the safety pieces and something that would be practical um, in execution so that it would not be difficult to um to legislate or to um to uh facilitate but yes, I appreciate that. I will follow up with the county on the sidewalk piece uh, just to confirm that. Um, and then I will follow up with the businesses as well just to make sure indeed from the ones that I did not hear that they indeed do not want to be. The hard part about picking and choosing a business in one block is that would make it uh, difficult to enforce because you wouldn't have the, you'd have one business on the block that would be and one that not. So I think that would be difficult for anybody who wants to do that. But I will follow up for clarity. Okay, anything else on that? So any other questions, concerns, things you want me to look into? I have a question. When does it become public intoxication if you live four blocks away from downtown? Anytime you, you anytime you exit the Dora, there will be signs. Anytime you exit the Dora, you are at your own risk. So then it's really not, it's only beneficial for the businesses and the people who like to drink. Um, no, That's it, what I'm asking. Well, it is, uh, and I don't think you were at the last conversation. Yes, first, I was. <laughs> well, the one that we had before, but um, it is a, it's an economic development driver to assist with restaurants in which they don't have to have the fences, so they can have outdoor seating, right. and then uh, like uncorked and to the new brews, they can have people walk back and forth and be ease of use in that direction so it's really a tool mostly for downtowns i mean there are other places that do have different areas but you have to have an anchor business that's either a distillery a brewery or a winery and currently as it stands we don't have any of those other areas in the um, city of rochester we only have a brewery that's downtown so that's why that was chosen um, as the area of focus if that makes sense. so like once you get off main street all the roads behind it are fair game. No, uh, no, only the areas that are in yellow is where the- I meant oh, fair yes. game for public intoxication. Oh, yeah. Uh, for public intoxication, you have to demonstrate a danger to yourself or others. Okay. Not just having- Walking funny. Not just drinking- Not just having a cup. And okay. having it in your system, you have to demonstrate a, a danger to yourself or others. Okay. I don't- Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Just, so they I mean, can, I have so a lot of cops I think down my say They can still get arrested for public intoxication within this yellow area. They still have to a, a, you know, abide, abide by, by, by the law. Yeah. yeah, it's just the law will say it's okay to have that cup. And the purpose is, is for ease of moving from restaurant right. to restaurant and so that they can have those unfenced areas. So. Okay. Well, yeah. I might have missed something, but uh, is any of this in the paper? The yellow lines, the map. The map went up there. Uh, yeah. We have anything about well, you're going to be there. You're already already asking about prices for the signs. Um, so you're going to be there. We're not there to publish it yet. I mean, you're this, not there to this publish is a public it. meeting. This is going to be on TV. It's going to be printed in the paper. You know, the map. I don't know if you're going to distribute the map yet until we get further. I mean, we have the preliminary map but we don't have what I feel like is the finalized map. Right. So we're still there, discussing, we're yeah, still we're, discussing boundaries. Yeah, we have a, we're having lots of robust conversations. Well, maybe we need another survey to the citizens of Rochester to ask if they want to promote alcohol on Main Street, because that's what you're doing. You're promoting the use of alcohol. Sorry about all the people that have businesses with alcohol, but that's what the promotion is. And I have a son, I mean, he's in his 30s now, that had a problem with alcohol. 
So now, uh, and this started with me when he was a teen, probably because I was a bad mother. But his license is revoked, and I imagine it's for a lifetime in his 30s. Why do we need it? Why do we need people on Main Street drinking alcohol? Kids are going to see that because I'm assuming that this is not an adult um, I don't, festival or, or whatever. There's going to be kids there, they're gonna, and they're going to see, well, that, you know, this is okay. I'm going to be like that. So I'm going to start now because I can buy the beer now. And but then later I'll be able to drink on Main Street. And uh, every decision we make at this at City Council is super complicated, right? Sunday because sales. there's all people on both sides. I think, you know, for this specific decision, it was something that was brought forth from the business owners and uh, the legislators at the state. We, we did not come up with this idea. It wasn't something that the city of Rochester actually um, uh, decided upon. It was something that the legislators at the state had offered as an economic development tool. And I completely understand your concerns because I also have a nonprofit that we assist individuals with substance use. So I get both sides. I totally get it. I think balancing all of the things for every decision is super hard. And I, I am all people know because I deal with the young lady that's walking in right now. We, we both work together on that. Um, at the same time, I do have to recognize uh, that we didn't decide this, but we, we are researching it and providing the opportunity for business owners who are impacted or could benefit from having the ability to have outdoor seating. Um, it in no way is meant to promote the misuse of alcohol, and in no way is it meant to promote um, anything that would be negative, though I do recognize that individuals um, as in every situation, will misuse, um, or potentially. I mean, there have been cities that have been doing this and nobody's had any issues thus far, I should say that, to be fair. Um, and there are cities the size of 400 to uh, 65,000 who have done this, and they have not yet um, had any issues. I know that uh, a couple of our team members have went, mayors have felt, they have discussed, we have researched this to ad nauseum, just because we want to be respectful, right? We want to make sure we're making a fair and relevant and um, respectable decision. So, but yes, I do get, I do get your concerns. So. so is there going to be an ordinance on the noise complaint? Because let's admit, some drums are loud. Okay, we, we've got ordinances for noise and stuff, but we, we really need to move on from this. We're early in the discussion. We're trying to get more planning done. Uh, you know, stay tuned. I mean, we're going to talk about yeah. this for two or three or four more meetings oh. before we ever get to the point where we're probably going to be looking at an ordinance. So, but we got a ton of stuff I got to do yet tonight. So. Just one quick comment. Can you please put the agenda of this meeting in the paper? It is. When? Where? Posted, isn't it? We posted. Posted on the outside. Posted on the outside. On the outside. The it doesn't have to be published in the newspaper. But well, why don't you? No, seriously, why no, do you not put saying. the agenda in the paper in the top of the town or, I mean, the, the school board uh, posts what they're, they're going to talk about in the top of the town. I think before it was a cost for the Victoria thing, right? But I don't know, Wes, what's your, I don't uh, I'm actually no longer with the Sentinel, but uh, one of the issues that I'll speak on is that we never got the agenda in time to get it out to people to let, to, to let them know because what's the, going to be discussed. Because of the two, uh, two, uh, two, two times a week paper? No, we would happily take, I know that I'll answer for them now, if you send them an agenda, they will happily run it. We just don't get it in enough time to let people know. For free? For free. Talk to the town should be free, right? It is. Yeah, we'll run it for free. You're speaking for the Sentinel now? I am still speaking. I'll speak for the Sentinel. <laughs> Does the Sentinel know this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me speak as a group yep. treasurer. Yeah. The print is only on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Right. So you're asking that we have a final agenda, you know, three or four days. I mean, I have to post on Friday nights. The Tuesday meeting, so I have to have it on the whatever last Friday was um, to say, here's the agenda, here's the notice. So, it, 
could possibly be in the paper on Saturday, but sometimes people change the agenda. I mean, I, you know, up until the very end. I mean, so it, it would be put in there, but it'd be subject to change because it changes on Mondays and Tuesdays. I couldn't find it on the Rochester um, City Council website. The agenda for this meeting today, I couldn't find it. I understand. Sorry. So, I mean, that, well, and I think it's we, partly, I mean, that, yes, I do agree with that, but it is always there for right now until we determine the back door is always Who knows there. it's there? Yeah. <coughs> was it in the top of the town? Go see the agenda on the uh, Rochester City Complex building. Well, Not on the front, but on the side. We are we are rebuilding our website, so hopefully we can get it on the website at the very least. If yep. we can't get the paper Thank done. You. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's our plan. It's just we don't have an IT person to do that yet. Okay, we're going on. Um, last week we talked a lot about the Nickel Plate Trail extension. Uh, we talked about the uh, Park Street option to make it one way. Uh, we had a good discussion on that. Uh, I noted a lot of safety concerns, and I. Before we start out, I'm planning on putting stop signs uh, on each side of Park Street on 12th because I heard the big, uh, a big concern was the speed coming up down 12th Street. Jim, you live close there. I mean, what, uh, in your opinion, will that help slow things down a lot on 12th Street? Yeah, um, yeah I, I would think it would help that. You know, congestion. regardless, regardless of how we it, vote, yeah. I still think those stop signs ought to go in place. Yeah, I mean, for that being a, a, a through way, because it's going to become more so if you make that one way. And if so, we do decide to vote that Nigga Park Street, there'll be a crossing there from the uh, trail that right. would benefit from the stop sign. Exactly. Well. Yeah. The other discussion we had, we put a stop sign on 10th Street um, on Park if we made it one way. I would, I would wait on that. Uh, until we see if, if we vote on this to make it one way, if that slows the traffic down, if, if you as citizens feel like traffic is still fast and we need a stop sign, then we can always put one on 10th Street at some point. Uh, does anybody here uh, have any uh, discussion concerning, we read that ordinance twice, uh, we'll shortly here have a motion to read it the third time and vote on that. Uh, does anybody have any comments they want to make uh, concerning that trail extension and, and turning Park Street into one way? So that we can have half of it, which would be the west half, as a walking uh, bike path. The east half would be the one way to the north. Uh, no, nothing. There'll be rumble strips in the middle, correct? And we've got three USI. Our engineers are here to answer any questions that way. Do you raise your hand, Jim? Yeah. So the one question um, at on Ninth Street, they were talking about a bridgeway for the stop in the middle of the road. How are you going to make that accessible to turn east? We're, ni we're nixing that. Okay. It was we had a fire uh, issue. Fire chief. <laughs> future, future fire chief. Is that the same thing you're thinking? <laughs> <laughs> I can't get the truck around that yeah, corner. Yeah, there is no way yeah. I could no. I could even no. attempt that. And that was that was a conversation we had in the last meeting about the yeah. safety cross on Ninth Street. Here's the thing on that. Uh, that trail crossed a lot of county roads. It crosses US 24. Uh, if people don't feel safe crossing right there at that point on 9th Street, they can always go down the light and cross that so, light. That's their choice, whatever they feel comfortable doing. But uh, there's a lot of hazards crossing. And the, the people on the bike path or, or the walking path need to realize you're at risk whenever you cross a highway or a county road or anything. So, I, I, but when we talked about the barricade there, yeah. we're going to have to put some major signage here to let people or keep people from turning south on Park Street, obviously. But, you know, as I've talked to you, you know, you're going to have, you are going to have a special exception with your equipment. Um, a stop sign there in the middle of 12th and Park will right. be gone. Uh, we did talk about maybe a barricade just enough inside where you can get your semis around the corner, but keep people from turning off of 12th onto the bike path part, they would have to go kind of around the little barricade to get to the actual street side of it. But we would place that in a way that you wouldn't have any problem with your longer equipment to get around that corner. So would I get a written exception? Whatever you whatever you like, yeah, it'd be, it'd be I mean, and, and if you got into a situation where, hey, I'm gonna be doing this once a week instead of once every couple of months, just let us know so we were aware of it. Uh, but uh, that would be something you could put in your 
carry with you or whatever. Well, and, and, and our police department would know. And that, yeah, the thing that, you know, you put it in there, I mean, why Shots is still around. I mean, it, I, he understands, but if somebody else would come into play, or, or, I would like to have something in some kind of a yeah. written or, format to say, hey, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. You would have something. Uh, I have a question. Uh, so and one of the things that he had suggested to bring up, which I don't know who would be responsible for this, and it's actually a great suggestion. Um, there is a, uh, there was a concern, I think, from a couple of the residents that they would be unable to get out of their um, homes easily. There's a alleyway there. I did drive that to confirm, indeed, that that was a thing. So I don't know if that's under he called uh, He called me on that, too. There is an alley just on the south side of Mark McCall's that goes east and connects with the alley that ends up going by the, uh, the Optimus Pub Pavilion and all. I mean, that's an option that we could, it's not been maintained, it could be maintained to shorten your route back to the south, and, but you're, I looked at it, you're only really shortening your route by a couple hundred feet or whatever with Mark McCall's property is to go on up to 10th Street and do the same thing, so I'm not sure that's a huge advantage. And I think it was more for other other residents that were over there, if I understood I mean, if it's, if it's something that's needed, we can do that. Yeah. It may not be paved, it may be more of a... Yeah, yeah it's more, the more the people that live there, so I don't actually live at that residence. Right. I'm just in and out with yeah. the trucks. And you know which alley I'm talking yeah. about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, it's, and there again, you're, you're talking about another 150 feet. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, it's, it's not... But if you know if residents really want it, we can put millions out there. We can maintain it. It's only I think I measured it off uh, GIS at like 340 feet. It wouldn't be a big deal to put some uh, millions there and make that uh, accessible to them if they chose to. Uh, so, any other thoughts or comments? Or I know Dan, do you have anything you want to say as far as the trail extension, the importance of it in your mind? Yeah, I'm Dan McCarthy, and I'm on the board of the Nickel Plate Trail. And the Nickel Plate Trail is uh, it's a 41 mile trail that goes from Rochester to Kokomo and it's part of the Great American Rail Trail, which is uh, a trail that goes across the United States. It's about 55% complete now and it goes from Washington State to Washington, D.C. and it uh, uses the Nickel Plate Trail. So it, uh, we're really, really in favor of that extension. One of the reasons why is because when I uh, meet up with long distance cyclists at the gazebo there at Mitchell, they'll say, hey, uh, don't you guys have a really good ice cream shop or a good hamburger joint or a brewery in town? And I'll say, yeah, yeah, uh, let's see, I'll give you directions on how to get there. Whereas now, if we had our trail extension, we would be bringing these long distance cyclists right into Rochester, giving them those amenities, and uh, I think it would be really good. And, yeah, we're only 55% done right now, but I think that this trail is uh, is going to be going forward as the years progress, and we're already designated as part of that trail. Also, uh, for the residents of Rochester, the trail starts at Mitchell, which is just outside the city limits of Rochester. So if you think of it as a, a linear park or a greenway, this is our chance to give access to all those people who live in Rochester a piece of that trail and they can get to it easily. When they extended the trail from Wabash to Mitchell, I just started seeing a whole lot more people using the trail from Rochester. But they're still at the point now where they gotta go park down by the gazebo to get access to the trail. And uh, now we would be bringing our long distance cyclists, we'd have our Rochester residents, all getting into Rochester, using the Rochester Pathway, getting over to the Dairy Queen. There's even a public restroom over there that we can direct our riders to. So I think it would bring a lot more people into the trail and we're thrilled to see uh, Rochester finally getting the momentum to get this done. Dan, do you know how wide the uh, path would be on Park Street itself? The reason I had, I've had a couple of people question, okay, if parking on a one-way street, we allow two-way bike traffic. Yeah, it'll be 10 foot wide, but it'll be like that. And it'll be one way for the vehicles. <coughs> the vehicles. Right. Oh, my God. So how 
How wide is Park Street? Um, it is uh, 20 feet. I'm oh, sorry, it's 22 feet. So we'll have a 10 foot length, a um, um, the, uh, shoulder floor stations, and a 10 foot trip. several in this town that they knew they can get the type of nourishment that people on a trail needs regularly because fast food places are not healthy for them and they can't do their their ride the way they want and they do go out of their way to find the type of food so that they can go the next day their 50 or 60 miles that they need to go and that was really interesting because I didn't realize that and it was like wow you know, this is, they really put a lot of work into going across country. You know, these are retired people. You know, some of them are young, uh, but most of them are retired people. They're, they're our age. And they're out there, they're riding their bikes, and this is their last experience with a big push, you know? And it's really kind of cool. What does Park Street have to do? Because we already got the trail in town. You, they can't get from from 18 to park. There's also people that live over there by the Columbia School. In order to take their children, because they just told me this, their children to get onto the trail, that part of 18th Street around those curves is very dangerous when you have somebody that's in kindergarten or first grade that's on their bike to get to the trail. Not near as dangerous as do as the just crossing the crossing the street. Well, not. Not Where here. otherwise you're there, I mean, think of coming from Columbia School, and you're you're now at that spot where you're around the corner, and people don't see you, but you don't want to get your kid to that to that trail. I'm just saying, somebody yeah. did say, so glad that that trail is going to be extended, so now I don't have to do that, and neither does anybody else after us. Have to. And, and and how many people don't take that trail because. You know, I've got three kids, and I can't watch them right. in that 35 feet. But I'm here to tell you that there is going to be a serious accident when they're crossing the Street. Well, they're yeah. in, they're in, there's a lot of, I mean, south of town, I come up into I, the town of 50. If you sit there and you go to get out of Park Street, you will notice what we're talking about. That is a suicide mission. Yeah. It's just so everybody's aware of it. Because that is a nasty curve. And I don't know if we're there for the sign that we can put there before nine, right at 9th Street and said, you know, I, something about the light option. I guarantee you, there's signs that we get every time we pull out of there. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not Nathan. Everybody's got them. <laughs> yes, go. Ruth, did you say that they was on a extend that trail over on Nelson's property they go over to the trail is that still on the works or was that just no, between the property between there where Nelson's is and the, and the uh, beauty hair shop. salon beauty salon right the beauty salon gave the right to the to the trail to go through. 
So is that in this proposal? I mean, is yes. this this well, is Well, that's not what we're talking. We're talking strictly about the twelve the night right. street, the, the but, Park Street one way. But what the, the plan is to, to cross there and go between the okay. buildings, and then go across and connect to the uh, golf course. Anything else? Okay, like I said, we read two ordinances last week. We need a motion to read it the third time by. Uh, in its entirety, I would suggest uh, well, you guys do as you wish. I motion to read it as an ordinance to the end of traffic schedule, whereas the Common Council of City of Rochester determined certain portions of the city's ordinances involving one-way streets should be amended to promote public safety. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Common Council of the City of Rochester pursuant to its authority under Indiana Code 9-21-1-3, subject A, subject 4, that Chapter 75, Schedule 4 of the Code of Ordinances for the City of Rochester is hereby amended as follows. Park Street from 12th Street to 9th Street shall be limited to northbound traffic only. Wilson. I am representing Dan Hubbard and Crestline Development and we've proposed a 44 unit apartment complex utilizing IHCDA funding Indiana Housing and Community Development funding. For those of you who are familiar or not familiar with that program, historically it has not um, been competitive for small towns to seek those fundings. This is a one-year situation where they have purposely designated uh, funding into small towns, and we are competing for that funding. Uh, so we have asked the city to grant us this revitalization area um, because it goes to the scoring that IHCDA uses to allocate their funding. So that's why we've come before you. This represents about a $12 million investment here in Rochester and would serve, as I said, 44 seniors or families uh, <coughs> with affordable housing. Okay. Any questions for James? You say with seniors or families? Yes. Or affordable housing? I'm sorry? You say seniors or family or affordable? It's all, it, every aspect of the property would have an affordable component. That's part of the trade-off to get the funding. Um, but the property is open to seniors or families. Uh, and I want to educate the public on this affordable uh, verbiage. Sure. I heard nothing for a year of campaigning except we need housing that we can afford. That's what this is, okay? It's not the negative connotation that we have in our head what affordable housing is. This is income based workforce housing uh, based on. Uh, our AMI correct. and it's if I remember right there's levels to it but you you have to qualify by making a certain amount of income you have to qualify and everybody has to pay their rent and, and you know it's not a free ride 
It's owned by and managed by the developer. Correct. Um, this is the only, if you want rents under a thousand bucks, that's the only way you're going to get that. Period. I mean, you're talking anywhere from 500 to 900 thousand dollars a month rent. You go new construction, you go market rate on apartments, you do his exact thing under market rate, 16, 1800 bucks or more. Correct. The units themselves cost two hundred thousand dollars piece per unit. And yeah. And so without this, without getting the state money and without getting the, the, the local help to get the state money, you simply would have to charge that. There's no other way to make economic choice. So we first of all we need to lose what we've many times thought what affordable housing is and what it could bring into our community as far as negative aspects. It is a positive aspect that we need in our community based on our population. And their needs so it's it's very well controlled these developers they have they have a very rigid uh, compliance in place correct me james if i'm out of no you're areas. absolutely correct thank you uh, because i want to we've got four developers looking for similar things and i don't know if you're aware of that james but you've you got some competition out there which is good right yeah, because you'll get the best product and there's probably gonna i'm guessing there may be probably just one of these developers are going to get this award so we're going to have 40 to 50 units that are going to maybe qualify or, or get score high enough to get an award from the state to have a, a complex that's both in an in a price range that people can afford. Outside chance you might get two, not likely. But like you said, um, uh, this is this may be a one year and done deal. It is a one, yes. So the I'm state not, has I'm a not, one I'm year gonna, plan. I'm still hoping, James, that we're going to get better than that. I talked to Mike Brown's team last week, okay. and they. They said they think he's going to be friendly to the smaller communities because he came out of a small community. So they feel like he's going to be friendly to people like us. <laughs> so we're hoping that we have this in multiple years going forward as an option. So, but uh, that's where we're at. This is not our decision to what is it going to grant this area an economic revitalization area. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Ultimately, the state decides how they spend their, you know, how they spend this this funding. And I'm, I'm not, I'm just asking questions because this, I, I don't know that I've heard this one before. I'm trying to keep track of all of them. Uh, Keller, I've seen about her, Heller, Keller, whichever. I've seen them a, a million times. But where is this specifically proposed housing and what is the developer's name? Uh, it's on Road Street. On what street? It's on Road Street. Oh, it's, this is the one that's the CBS then. Okay. Okay. So, and, project is called Chamberlain Place. Yeah, I did see that. I just had not heard that terminology before. So it is behind CVS. And then the developer that will be developing and managing that is, what's the name? So the management company is Crestline. Crestline. C-R-E-S-T-L-I-N-E. -E. Okay. And, and the that's developer the is, is Crestline and Hubbard, so it's called CNH. So they are the same company? They're they the same. Have, okay, yes. a different. Okay. And, and we've, I, I, Use the term vetted. We've actually vetted you guys. We've vetted all the developers have been uh, coming to us, and we have the four developers that uh, we're really looking at strongly right now, or looking at us, I guess strongly. Uh, they rate very high in other communities. We've got a good product, good team, good management. So uh, we feel like we are blessed by having the developer we have coming to us and seeking the project. So. And, and Dan sends his apologies. He had a family commitment, so that's why I'm standing. So this is behind CBS. There's a woods behind CBS that they're looking at, and they would they would carve out of that woods. If I understand right, carve out of that woods and area. It would still be kind of, if I remember right, the the site plan showed kind of trees surrounding the complex, but it would be kind of placed in the middle of that woods, uh, this, this apartment complex. So it's there is a street back there. I don't think very often, but it's called Road Street right behind <laughs> CBS. The wooded property. How many? What's there like two and a half or? Oh, it's just over two and a half acres. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I think it's very well needed here, really. And it's, a, it's, a, it's a good thing for the community, as long as you make sure the developer and the management is here long after the... And that's why we've checked with other communities, other municipalities, other mayors, to take done projects in, and, and we've got very, very high marks with these, all of them. It's really a great project. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the way we feel, too. And I think Mike Ladd back there, he's been very involved. And with Fedco and all these, uh, and I think he and I are totally in agreement on this as well. Mike, do you have anything you want to add on that? No, I think you handled everything. I think the, the real issue you addressed with affordable, it's not Section 8. 
It's no. affordable housing, which means that I can spend 30% of my income on a place that I can afford to live and keep up, and the rest of it I can live as a human being. Nobody's got to subsidize me, nobody's got to help me. That's the type of housing that we're bringing in. Uh, and this is just the first of four developers that uh, we're dealing with. Uh, so I just want to make sure people understand affordable does not necessarily mean Section 8. Do we, uh, Andy, do we need to make an individual uh, motion or can we, we've got Keller represented to you, or can we make one motion to do both at the same time? No, you should make individual motions. Okay. All right, any other discussion on that? Yeah. Uh, if you're looking at the packet, this chamber in place, somehow the um, tax abatement information for college got stuck on the back of it, so it's okay. in the wrong packet. I apologize. And Andy, remind me what this, this was from the last meeting. This ordinance has to be done. Is it resolution? Resolution, resolution. okay. So, so as, as part of a request for a tax abatement, two-step process okay really a three-step process step one is this okay okay and then uh, uh, presumably at the next meeting you will uh, have a public hearing after the treasurer publishes on this you'll have a hearing and then after that hearing you will vote whether to pass the confirmatory resolution that declaratory resolution <laughs> then hearing then confirmatory usually it's done right at the close of the hearing um, and with both those things, the, the, uh, then the, the sending of that to the auditor and so forth. But with, with those things, that's what makes the, uh, the abatement process stick. So and then the actual determination of the Correct. Right. So you could pass, the, the, this resolution is really just, just agreeing to start the process. Oh. You know, in theory, you can have a hearing and then decide you're not going to confirm it and, and no abatement occurs. But uh, the declaratory resolution is the first step. Okay. So I think we need a motion to um, accept this declaratory resolution. May I use the right verbiage there? I'll make a motion. I have a question about yeah. the resolution first. Okay. The, on the uh, first page down at the bottom, the last paragraph, it, it says not therefore be it resolved. Should that not be now therefore be it resolved? Uh, I, 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 mine says now. I see what he's saying. It says not on mine. Mine says not. Well, that's interesting. Mine says, mine says now. Mine says now. Mine says not. Okay. Marty, you should sign one that says now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we sign on mine anyway, as you all know. So on mine does say now. Thank okay. You. <laughs> We need a resolution number. We don't have a resolution number. I know. I, um, is it up to 14? 14-204. And that is Chamberlain? 224, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. But this isn't it. Is this the right one? Because this is just a territory? So Amy made a motion to approve this declaratory resolution. We need a second or did somebody second? Mark okay. seconded. Did you get that, Beth? Yes. Okay. So uh, all in favor, raise your right hand. It's approved. Uh, this is on resolution 14-204. Twenty twenty four. Twenty twenty four. Fourteen days. Two oh four. No, two oh two four. Twenty twenty four. Two oh two four. Two oh two four. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else on that? I shouldn't be, I don't think. So now uh, we have another developer seeking a very similar thing with Keller Developer again. We have uh, spent a lot of time, Mike and I and others have spent a lot of time with Keller. Uh, they're out of Fort Wayne. And uh, another great company, great management group. Um, so, Dawn, I'll yes. turn it over to you. Thank you. I hate having my back to anyone. So I'm going to go over this. Yes. Um, I had some slides, but I think I'm just going to forego those because we've done a pretty good job of explaining it already, what this is. Um, and that, those can be gone over at the public hearing if you prefer. But, Basically, what Keller is proposing are 35 units of senior housing, so 55 and older, um, also affordable, also through the program that was described by the state. Um, 
for affordable housing. So this particular property is at 1329 College Avenue, um, and we are requesting also the same, that it be declared an economic revitalization area for the purpose of us being able to request tax abatement for all the same reasons we just talked about. Um, highly competitive program. Um, you, are, you are correct, typically not more than one project gets awarded. Um, I'd like to think there's a possibility for two, but I'm not gonna ever promise that. There could be none, <laughs> quite frankly, because there are other developments throughout the state that are also competing for these funds. So I guess I would just reiterate how important it is that we see some type of local governmental participation in the way of like a tax abatement in order to help our application score better than others that are even, even being built throughout the state. So um, it is a way for you to participate without coming directly out of your pocket. We've talked about that a little bit. Um, like the site that we're talking about currently is vacant. Um, it has a, a shut on it. But other than that, you're going to continue to receive the same tax dollars on the land. The abatement would just be for the improvement. So explain that because I explained it to all the council last week. It's not really on the investment. We're not abating the, the, the investment, but the income on this program is just the income. So we're looking at if I on your particular project, we're looking roughly around three hundred thousand over ten year. Your ask was like a ten year, one hundred percent abatement, mm -hmm. and to put that in real number, that's about three hundred thousand over ten years, mm -hmm. and that three hundred thousand can be applied towards our ten percent participation. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. So versus a market rate investment of say like yours is what seven and a half million yeah say seven and a half million if we were going to give a 10 year 100 percent on seven and a half million now you're talking to between a little over two million dollars uh, that we can be given away so that's where if and i've tried to work with these developers that whoever doesn't give uh, up the award i still love to have a project by them to you know working here and but the whole abatement plan will be different mm -hmm. it'll look Quite a bit different because we're not going to give our money away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, no, absolutely not. But uh, we know where we are from the cash standpoint, and to be able to put 300000 toward that 10% match is, is, is huge for us right now to be able to get projects rolling. So, that's a later <laughs> discussion, but uh, you know, do you have any more you want to say nope. concerning? Okay. That's, that's all I have. So, we're, we're doing the same thing. Yeah, I gave uh, the gentleman, Greg, right? right. yes. he presented yesterday at the right. right. there was a robust conversation, right. but he did it excellent job. What I liked the most was that there was discussion related to the fact that it was geared towards uh, seniors and that the funding that you would have to receive, it was a 40 year guarantee that they could not actually change uh, the residents. And so for 40 years, well, probably change the ownership of it, right? Well, yeah. the ownership can actually change. I don't want you to be misled by that. The ownership can change. but. You, you file a restriction on the property for affordability. Oh, I see. Oh, I got you. Okay, yeah. For 40 years, so it has to be related to seniors. And the, the neat part about their project would be right the back, out their back door would be the trail extension, mm -hmm. which, you know, plays well for elderly, you know. I say elderly. For 55 and older. I'm not there yet. 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 <laughs> All right, so we need a motion to approve this declaratory. What's the resolution? resolution? 15-2024. Okay. So moved. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me get my papers here. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, right. That's right. Okay. That's 15. So Mark, Mark you, you moved it? Yes. Thank you. Second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. All opposed in any. Okay. All right, we're good. Thank you. Dr. Dr. Hoff, um, can we do the same with him even though he's not president? He made his, or, or are we prepared for that yet? Well, my, my only problem with my packet is there's a reference to an Exhibit A, and I don't see an Exhibit A. I don't know this on my on the, this one? On the college one? Hoffs. No, Hoffs. No, I'm not. Yeah, I don't, we don't have, we didn't get, we didn't get like, detail. Well, the resolution's not complete without an Exhibit right. A, so I can't. So we can't do anything I can't on recommend that. it. Yeah. Okay. All right. 
next item is the stormwater fees discussion. I'm having a meeting tomorrow with somebody who can guide me a little bit further down that road. I, I, I'm, I'm kicking it on down the road a little bit. I, I've got some questions. Um, honestly, it uh, comes down to uh, I'm looking at a possible utility voucher for our population that just cannot handle a uh, more financial load. I'm working with a couple organizations to get with their database to try and pinpoint who that population is. Um, this is just a thought I've had. I'm not sure it's going to work out. I'm not sure log logistically we can even do it. But before I just put out a flat stormwater rate suggestion, I'd, I'd like to look at that. The other side of it, uh, you know, the uh, lake people uh, that aren't using any stormwater uh, drainage. All of it goes to the lake. You know, they're going to question why are we getting hit up for a rate when we're not using any of the infrastructure. Uh, you start exempting those two groups. Now you're putting a lot of the burden on the businesses. So I'm just not comfortable right yet. Uh, so let me have a little more time. And I meet with Joe Tomer tomorrow for about three hours, and he comes from the lake community. Um, obviously, he has a, a percentage of his. Um, populations like ours uh, that just can't handle any more lift. So I want to uh, pick his brain a little bit before we talk about it any further. You guys are okay with that? Yep. Sure. Uh, all right, uh, Amy, uh, Dwayne's not here. You want to talk yep. briefly about the sidewalk and tree board? Oh, we got it. Yeah. Um, I have the exhibit A on the Chamberlain one that we just did. I don't have it on POPs. Right, right. Yeah, that's POPs. That's why we can't move on today. Okay. You good? Um, so, uh, as a point of reference, um, we had a resident who had talked to Trent regarding the sidewalk committee that used to be in existence. Um, Trent asked me to um, speak to this resident, um, and I um, found out upon further investigation, having spoken to Dwayne that former Mayor Mayor Thompson was a part of that uh, whole process as well. And so I sat down with um, Phil, who's here, as well as uh, Mayor Thompson to discuss um, the concept of the sidewalk committee, why was it important, why was it taken away, all of those pieces. Um, after obtaining all the information, I circled back around with Dwayne and Phil. Um, Phil, raise your hand, wave at everybody. Um, and we discussed with Dwayne uh, what his thoughts were related to that. He was very much in favor because he does not have enough people on his um, uh, his team, his staff, to be able to do things like uh, take an inventory of the sidewalks. And so um, Phil has graciously already worked with um, Dwayne to uh, get an inventory, um, a, a detailed inventory of the sidewalks, including ADA, so that um, eventually at some point that would be um, helpful for Dwayne to put into his database um, for future reference. So the discussion between Dwayne and Trent, I believe, um, and Randy was that we would look at um, the current ordinance. Did you find that, Beth? So because we, there was discussion whether there wasn't an ordinance or there was already yeah, yeah, related so to 75. This. Yeah, 70.9. Okay. But I so, didn't have a copy of it, sorry. Yeah, so we, we are needing to review the current ordinance as it stands. There was discussion about potentially putting the sidewalk committee together <coughs> with the tree board. There was some hesitancy related to that discussion from a tree board member. So what we discussed was after we get that up the uh, ordinance that Beth found and Andy found that myself, Phil, um, Dwayne and Randy would sit down and discuss it further and come back to the city council with a recommendation or more discussion points, but we just wanted to bring it as a point of reference um, so that the city council understood that this was something that was happening. We've had a hard time getting tree board members. We have, we've had a few from outside the county wanting to serve. They can't because, I mean, outside the city. They can't because they're outside the city serve on it. So right now we're down to two on the tree board. Uh, there's a lot of combination work between the the uh, tree board and the sidewalk uh, committee or the sidewalk issues. So uh, it was an idea to bring uh, some people in from the sidewalk committee into the tree board and 
to some sort of combination type work, uh, which I think is a step in efficiency. Uh, but we'll find out more as we get, you know, next month. Phil, do you have anything that you'd like to say? I have um, this started in April 30th was the first meeting. In the meantime, I have taken Rochester in five different sections. Section one is um, Race Street to Main Street North and everything east. Second section is from 9th Street, Main Street, everything west to 31. Uh, section three is 9th Street to Main Street, everything south. To the, including the high school, school view, um, Lake Shore, uh, Lake View Bend. Uh, section four is 9th Street, Main Street, everything east to the railroad tracks. And section five will be Manitou Heights. And in Manitou Heights, it will go from Wolbach to the railroad tracks. So it'll be Park Street. I have taken Section one, section one is completed. I got pictures of all the sidewalks that need to be placed. I have a sales spreadsheet at each intersection. There's supposed to be at least eight sidewalks, areas to cross. Uh, I have counted each section of how many is ADA already done, what's not done, or if there's not a sidewalk there. There's some places where sidewalks don't go all the way to the street so it may only be one section one intersection may only have six sidewalks so that's what i'm doing with an excel and i'll give that to Dwayne for him to do so every street every sidewalk should be done by the end of july that the city of rochester will have a complete inventory and then it's up to you guys to decide what what needs to be fixed yeah. and, and according to i'm just throwing a number out if you were able to get a grant for a million dollars you could use it real quick yeah well we, you know we got that federal grant to do the major work we did this spring and that took five years right federal grants are pain, <laughs> pain. Uh, we, we have discussed to a 50 50 you know where the city picks up up to a fifty thousand dollar limit each year homeowner covers 50 right. we cover 50. Uh, that's that's something we can do pretty quick. We can get some repairs done pretty quick until we run out of money for that year. So we're looking at that pretty seriously because we can get action quick. You bring the federal government in, everything slows down. Yeah. So uh, when I was on the committee in '96, through the two terms with Mayor Thompson, we only had twenty thousand dollars every year to spend on the on the 50 /50. Yeah. So that's the icing on top of the cake. Yeah. So this is this is better. I mean, the, the federal thing is free, but it'll be 2030 before you're really done, you know. You know, Ruth and I have talked about the, the Park Street and then we talked about there's not a sidewalk from 18th Street all the way out to 31. And we have a lot of uh, kids that go out there to work for fast food and everything. That is something I'd like to get focused on because we talked about the walkability of our town and that that's, uh, yeah. And we talked about there instead of a sidewalk, there we could make it like a trail. I don't know that's feasible, which, which is different in price and things like that. But, but I am thoroughly in, in enjoying working with the city. And this is the first time since I've been here in 40 years that this is the first council that I see that really cares about the Rochester community. And we want to move forward. It's always been, this is a retirement community. I've seen just in the, in the six months with this new administration, it's going, it's looking good. And I appreciate every one of you for doing that for the city of Rochester. Thanks Phil, thanks for all your work already. And one last, uh, one last piece is that the hope is that the sidewalk committee would be that community liaison between uh, Randy and Dwayne and the citizen to be able to discuss, um, to, to talk through what those uh, pieces would look like and to um, be the uh, carrier of information. So we'll report back with all the things once we figure it out. So, okay. Thanks, Bill. Sounds good. All right, we don't have anybody here to discuss the pilot plan, do we? Uh, I know we had one developer interested in the, in the payment in lieu of taxes, but they're not present, so 
we don't need to discuss anything there at the time. I need to get better birth on what that is. I've had one developer, in fact, I think Keller was talking to her before the meeting. She says, I don't really know. I asked her the question about what's the difference. She said, well, there is a difference, but there really isn't any advantage. So she was kind of puzzled why the payment of the taxes was even mentioned, but we'll find out more later if necessary. All right. Um, it's all old business, unless anybody's got anything else, and we'll go to new business. Okay, Burgess, sorry, I got you here 45 minutes <laughs> earlier yeah, than necessary. You're, you're but, fine. Uh, Burgess Smith from Hope. I don't know how familiar any of you are with the program that we started with Hope County Hope for probably four years ago, uh, which we called Hope for the Homeless. And I've been running that program since. I have just put my 400th person under roof. Um, we, when I say hope for the homeless, most people are thinking of someone that's on the street, and that's not necessarily always the case. Today I'm working with a lady that was sent to Fulton County to relocate because of domestic abuse. She is not safe in the county that she's in by Catholic Charities, and they had heard from us. So uh, they had asked for help with her deposit because no other organization in Fulton County provides a deposit or first month's rent. Uh, some of them within the last little bit had helped a little bit with the rent because I was out of funds but they will not help with the deposit. It's not in their charter, and that's what we have done, is deposit and first month's rent. Uh, when we set up the requirements for this program, I said I will not put anyone in that does not have a job or some means of support, because to me, it's setting them up for failure. The next month, if you can't pay the rent, you're looking at someone in filing eviction, and then you're back with an eviction on your record and you're getting into a horrible cycle. Uh, some of the people that I put into housing have been living at the Rochester Motel. They're working, uh, but when you're paying $240 a week, that's $960 just in a four week month. You've got the fifth week on there, you add another 240. And it is way more than what in a lot of cases, uh, they're struggling to eat because they don't have enough money. And uh, like today, uh, when I'm working with this lady, she has three children. Uh, they're all now having to get counseling and things because they're not in a safe environment. And uh, Catholic Charities wanted to know if we could please pay the deposit for them so that they could. Um, I'm out of funds. My husband and I paid it. Uh, like I said, you know, we've gotten about 400 people under roofs. The county commissioners have been uh, very supportive of the program. I've gotten at least $10,000 a year from them, and I also got some American Rescue Funds. This city uh, informed me that we didn't have any homeless in Fulton County several years back, and I could see your eyebrows. <laughs> uh, and. Uh, they gave us $5,000, and I have never gotten anything else from, from this from the city. Uh, I'm finding the same thing that you are. We've got a council now that seems to care about Fulton County. And I don't want to set an amount, but any amount that some, you know, if you could help would be a blessing to a lot of people. Uh, the rents in Fulton County, we definitely need affordable housing here. Uh, a one room at Northgate upstairs is $750 a month. Plus then a deposit, you're looking at $1,500 to, just to get somebody in. And uh, people that are struggling and that have children, or even when they don't have children, that's way more than 30%. You know, 750 is way more than 30% of their income. And so they're having to get a lot more, uh, use a lot more of the programs to get assistance in other areas, you know. Uh, they, <coughs> if the 
have a really cold month or whatever, you, you don't have money then to pay your electric bill and uh, or your heat bill and that. So uh, has it been 100% successful with the people? No. I'm not going to tell you that every one of them works out. I can tell you that we now have two families that have managed to buy homes on contracts and uh, doing well, keeping up with their payments, and just the pride that you can see in, in when you talk to them, you know, because a lot of them still keep in contact with me. Uh, and part of that is because, you know, our church now has uh, gathered furniture and clothing and things like that. So when I put someone off of the street into a place, I generally can provide uh, furniture, dishes, pots and pans, clothing, bedding, towels, anything that they need for that house. So uh, my husband and I delivered furniture last night at 10 o'clock. So uh, I would appreciate any assistance that the city could give us. And as a point of reference, just so the check's not made out to the wrong place. So Fulton County Hope transitioned to help to create a housing Yes. organization that specifically identifies supporting um, affordable <coughs> housing needs and it's called Lighted Pathways. So Mary Kay always tells me to be clear in all things. Yes. She reminds me always. So this is in honor of Mary Kay who tells me that <laughs> constantly. Yes. I knew she would hit me up later, ask me a question. So um, Hope was gracious and grateful to be able to research this uh, subject of housing ad nauseum and then help to foster the creation of this Lighted Pathways, which Virgia is an angel and serves on the Board of Hope as well as Lighted Pathways. So um, I just wanted to make sure that was clear. So if we indeed do give money, that it would be made up to the wrong word. Right. So. And thanks. Thank Amy. you. Okay. We're always reminding yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you, looking. Amy. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to remember to tell you that, but I didn't. I uh, saw her, so. Yeah. Uh, you probably have known at Fulton County Housing Authority, Inc., most people think of that as being a government agency. It's not, it's a not-for-profit. So I said, who is going to donate anything to Fulton County Housing Authority <coughs> because they think that it's a government agency? <laughs> and it's not. So they renamed it to Lighted Pathway. So. Uh, and the reason for that too is that Lighted Pathways has more access to be able to receive other grants that Fulton County would not in the housing realm. So. This is assistance. Right, we have applied for grants to hopefully get more housing in Fulton County, and I can see that with the city we're also working with others to get housing in because there's not enough to go around. All right, well. Anyone have any questions? There are not enough wonderful adjectives to describe your, yours and Dave's work and efforts in their community the last few years. I mean, Thank you. There's a lot that's come out of their personal pockets to help others and they're angels. I just have to say one thing. You don't know what it feels like to have a five-year-old run across the room and grab you around the legs and say, you found us a home. <laughs> so, thanks, Trent. I'll go back to celebrate recovery. Okay, so, um, so I think going forward, uh, we need to look, I, I personally would like for the council to look at putting a budget item in for next year to help them, and if we, if we feel like we can do something now that's on you guys, uh, we can make a motion to whatever, I mean, we can figure it out, but uh, certainly in next year's budget line, I think we need to, I would like to see us include um, lighted pathway is that where it would fall under right um, as a, a place where we uh, invest into our community into our uh, not just homeless but less fortunate those are need right. need a boost in life so. I also have elderly people you know that I have gotten out of abusive situations you know they come in and their arms are black and blue where they've been shaken by their uh, kids and stuff like that, and they need a safe place to go. So it works for all ages. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Any discussion? Any thoughts? Anything to say about that quarter one? What are you thinking? budget line item and wherever we take it. I don't know about going next year. Um, I think that um, currently a lot of the uh, like compassion health cares and the Fulton County on aging and everything comes out of the council budget. So I mean we just add another line item to that for this year. We can yeah we can discuss next year you know do we want to discuss anything uh, immediate or as financial health, they could certainly use it. So that's you guys' call. Yeah. What'd you say, Beth? Oh, he, he, he's in favor of doing something immediately. Oh, okay. He said if we didn't come to the table, he'd pony up. <laughs> I that. Double, double the money. <laughs> actually, I do have to admit they have been helpful before. Uh, Smithsonian spent through their partner actually did donate at one point to Hope for the Homeless when it was under Hope. So um, Mark did actually call me up. Does <laughs> <laughs> anybody have a figure they want to look at? Hey, I'm curious. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Do have a <laughs> I mean, would you have a suggestion? I mean, I don't feel that I can speak on this. Not because I'm not well, I'm a couple of people. I'm going to suggest, I'm going to suggest 5,000, but you have to be a lot more aggressive next year. I'm going to say 5,000 immediate, and then be more aggressive next year is my suggestion. Yeah, 5,000 is almost an insult. But well, I mean, but, if you want to go more, but we, I mean, that's what the city gave before. I mean, I, I thought it could be fair in saying that, is that the city has given when it was under hope, they do. They, that was the number that the city gave previously. And the costs are higher, so I mean, if you want to go more than one, I just the council's been in ten. Or county is. I mean, the county's given how much? Ten. The county, the county's given ten. So what do I, I don't know. What do we have? Can we get ten somewhere? Yeah, I'll find somewhere. We can do ten. Okay, we got a motion to do, uh, do ten thousand to lighted pathway. Um, need a second? I'll second. Bruce seconded. Yeah. Where, 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 where are we going to pull out from? Council? Rainy day fund. Your pocket. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could do rainy day fund. We could do rainy day fund. I'll, I'll find it somewhere. I'll... Let us know. I will. <laughs> okay. All in favor say aye. 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 I'm abstaining. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great idea. I know she's going to tremendously appreciate that. All right. Um, Holy County, are you going to speak on that behalf? The uh, so uh, every year, the Animal um, Adoption Agency, uh, Animal Shelter, in short, receives money from the city of Rochester. And so uh, Beth asked to be able to receive that money that Janet would put in the request in a written form. I believe the um, amount that we have traditionally given them was the $50,000. And so she, in, as far as I know, she followed up? She did, and <clears throat> we play it, pay it twice a year. So we do 25000 and then 25000 um, Okay. So um, she's just putting in the request for what has been done before. For, so. the next, for next year's budget, because this year would have already been approved. Right. She's just asking to get the money right now. but. I know you had a question related to that, remember, about uh, keeping the money current. Did you figure that one out? Yeah. Okay. We're, we're current on them. Asking for current next year's money now, or just? I think she was just wanting the release of it. You guys have already approved it. Yeah, I mean, it's in the, it's in the budget. Right. So this, it's this in the year's budget, budget correct. approved, so we right. should yeah, that way. Right. We have anything. We just want to let you know what's going out. Okay. Has she had the money for this year? Is that it is for this year. Okay, so she's just asking for the release of the funds that mm -hmm. she's already been approved. Well, we don't yeah. need a motion okay. for that. No. Okay. Sorry, that's, that's, automatic. that's automatic. Yep, gotcha. Okay. Question. Okay. <laughs> well, that pre introduction from Amy, I would tell you that I'm a numbers girl. Um, just to give you a little bit of a, a synopsis of the best kept secret in Fulton County we provide free health care for the uninsured in Fulton County. 
And one might say, well, everybody has health insurance, so why are we needed? I can tell you that 50% of our patients right now fall in that sweet spot that they make just enough to not qualify for Medicaid and yet are not wealthy enough to afford health care insurance. And if you wake up one day with no health insurance and you have a catastrophic issue, you're going to go to our ED. This year, so far, 23 of our patients have said when they walked in our door, they would have gone to the emergency room if we weren't open. And I can tell you that, at a minimum, that has saved the county at least $23,000. You know, one admission in through the ER is definitely more than $1,000. So 23 patients said we'd have gone right to the ER without you. Uh, we provide medical primary, but then through grants, we provide dental, we provide vision, uh, including uh, glasses, and we provide mental health counseling, all free in our clinics. So uh, now the dental and vision, we do through a grant through our local dentist and our uh, local eye doctors. So we provide all of that. We say integrated health care, uh, primary medicine, but then um, provide those other services too. We have seen a marked increase in our Hispanic population. We are now almost 50-50 uh, with our uh, Hispanic patients who are coming to us. And often we see that children are covered under CHIP and then dad's working, so he's got something through his workplace. It's mom who has nothing at all. And we have found several women with some fairly significant uh, health issues that have just hesitated to go to an ER setting, you know, that have luckily found us. Um, a story I like to share is that recently a person who worked at a convenience store got a raise. So they're, you know, in that euphoria of now I'm going to have more money. Well, the raise put them outside of the limits for Medicaid, and so they were hypertensive and diabetic. Now all of a sudden they have no health insurance and no way to obtain that medication. So luckily they learned of us. We were able to do that. Uh, we provide numerous medicines. Uh, including even like the Libre sensors for our diabetics. I mean, we provide a really amazing quality uh, of, amount of care for the patients that we treat. Uh, you did last year graciously give us 15,000, um, and I believe we are a line item approved on this year's budget for 15,000, and I would ask that we continue to be a line item on your budget. I think that we talked about third quarter. Yeah. So, uh, release of those That's funds. It was last year. So. Yes. So, you know, just the gratitude. We we survive on grants and personal donations um, and, you know, don't get a lot of funding from, you know, county or city. So the 15000 last year and then again this year is greatly appreciate. Currently at mid-year, we are 18000 in the red. So that has come about mostly because um, just to keep our county hospital you know, moving forward, they have had to limit the amount they can write off for us. So we have tried to subsidize some of that. Uh, they graciously are still giving our patients a healthy discount, uh, either an 80% discount or a 100% discount, which is definitely fabulous for our patients. Uh, but sometimes that 20% that the patient has to pay is still unachievable. You know, kind of like Virg is saying, they're just trying to afford housing and food medical is the last thing they're thinking of. We often have a patient come to our door and they have two or three comorbidities and they are really in tough shape. And they want us to cure them overnight, which, you know, wish we could do that. Uh, but they've waited because they haven't gone to our ER. They haven't abused it, uh, but then they find themselves so deep in the, the hole with their health that it's, it's pretty tough to get them turned around. But I would tell you it's an amazing thing that we do. We've been around since 2009. And again, I say we're the best kept secret because people will say, well, I didn't know about you. I think we have to think in their mindset, again, they're trying to figure out housing, they're trying to figure out how to get from point A to point B if they don't have a car, how do they get gas if they do have a car. So they haven't really thought about their, their health care at all. And so they don't care that we're around till they need us. And then all of a sudden, you know, you wake up and you're definitely ill that day. We're pretty important to them that day. Um, but again, thanks for the money that you're funding us with, and we would just ask that we continue to be a line item in your budget. I have to give props yeah, to the next year. Since we've already voted, we've already done this year, but it'll be just consideration for next year. We don't need any vote tonight. We're just, she just asked us to make sure we would be more than happy to continue on the next year.
Mary Kay. qualifies at a income level? Or is yes, we like take this? up to 300% of the federal poverty guideline, which is really generous. So, you know, some people hesitate to come to us, oh, I make too much money. 66% of our people are working right now. So, you know, they are making money. They just are not making enough. About the cheapest, and you all know that, I mean, $150 or so a month is about the cheapest policy you can get. And then you've got a $5,000 deductible. Mm -hmm. That might as well be all the money in the world to them. So they just hesitate to do it. It's cheaper to keep people healthy than to treat them when they're ill. So that's what we're trying to do. You know, they say, oh, we're, we're, we're fine today. That's great. We want to keep you fine. We want to keep you healthy. And we do everything we can to do that. Um, since you said you're 18,000 in the hole, I think we can go ahead and release the 15,000 <clears> in this quarter before September. So. I'll, you've oh, we'll continue to get it. in the hole, so it's I know, but that'll kind of make it less in the hole right, right, right now. So right, uh, that, that if, you wanted, if you would like to have it this quarter, we can do that. Um, really, for budgeting, I know that sounds crazy, but our golf no. outings right now, so, okay. you know, third quarter is usually pretty lean for okay. us, so third quarter is still okay. great, great. great for us. And I wanted to just say, I accidentally got a compliment on uh, uh, Mary Kay today because I had called to do some research on real services and a self-sufficiency program that Hope is looking into and talk to Latonia mm -hmm. from Real Services and she basically said that you were a lifesaver for resources for Fulton County because they almost pulled all of Real yes. Services funding from Fulton County yes. but when she found you and you were such a great partner we were able to still obtain the funding that we deserved because of your case. So I did not mean to find that out today I just had to call the research team, and that's what that said. That offsets her telling me how. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did learn, um, it was actually uh, many, many years ago, we realized there was funding avail available for Fulton County that had never been utilized. And so we went after that money, and we have gotten a minimum of ten to $15,000 every year for our dental. And medical's one issue. Dental is a whole other issue. We get more calls every day on dental because some people have medical but don't have dental. And you all know dental's not cheap at all. Uh, this year we have 12,000 to cover all of our patients for the year, but we do a lot of good, and our local dentists are fabulous to work with us on that. Thank you. Thank you. Any this uh, is our annual report, which I'll just uh, give you for reference. Any other new business? Um, I would ask, like when, when, you, when you need to go ahead and set our budget meeting tonight, or we have one more month? We typically didn't, we usually do it in about July. Yeah, it's, um, let's do it for July, because I just got, they, they've moved some of the dates back before we can get all the information we need, so they moved, moved it from like the first of June or July to the middle of July, and we're not having our DLGF meetings until July, past July 15th, so if we could do it at the July meeting, July 22nd? Yeah. 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 Well, no, it's not, it's not a regular meeting. It's a special meeting because it's a, it's a lengthy process, typically. Oh, okay. So and that's the one time of year the mayor buys us dinner. Oh, exactly. Out of the mayor's budget. Okay, out of the mayor's budget. But it would be the 22nd of July. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Not that one. Yeah. 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 We recently we've gotten it done in one meeting, but sometimes it takes two meetings. Yeah. We need to look so, the first week in August, maybe? Or I think she said the week of July, July. 22nd. Oh, but whatever the meeting. Well, I, you know, I guess I'm not familiar with the, what you guys are used to, so perhaps we can Typically, it's always around July 11th. Yeah, but we got to figure it out. But now it's the same. Because, yeah, if we can't have the meetings with the DLJ until after July 15th, Andy, they changed it. Sure. Well, that's so, cool. um, so it's going to have to be at the DLGF meeting? Yeah. Regular meeting. At least this year. I, I, I'll be, you know, Brian, you're asking me questions that I, I, I've never done the budget yet. So, I mean, it's just all brand new to me. So if you guys can, you know, yeah, like just maybe that has to be a special meeting, then I need to you know, do that. But what, are you, do you set your whole budget at that time? We meet with department heads, and they propose their budget, we look at it. And oh, you're doing that meeting? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, I thought you were just meaning. Oh, I just thought you were just meaning your budget. I, I, I think the meeting you're describing contains no official action. 
it's a public meeting, but to essentially right. a, a work session. Yes. Okay. And I, I suspect that any limitations DLGF has, they're only concerned about the, the, the actual vote on the budget. Yeah, no, that, what their concerns are is I don't have the numbers. Okay. So well, that's, well, I, mean, you could, I mean, I don't you have could, the, all the tax information, everything to know what the revenue is. So, okay. and you know, trying to jam all the department heads stuff into that before we have the meeting with you guys. I mean, <clears throat> usually those meetings, at least from what I'm hearing from the DLGF, and so maybe I'm not following what you guys are saying, is that it's due the first of November. I'm hoping to have it done by the first of October. You know, it has to be published, and then I was thinking we would meet in September with you guys. After we had worked with the department heads, but that's not what, you're, what you've done in the past. No, I think the that's department what you're heads saying, present yeah. their budgets to us, and we approve. We, you know, we we make changes as we as we see fit, and we construct the final budget that is proposed to the uh, at a regular meeting that we vote on and we submit to the state. So is that enough we, time? For but you're you're wanting to do it in July versus it's not doing it on the first. I don't have a. Okay. That is just when we traditionally have done well, it in July because, because of the deadline set by the state. Well, I know, because she's done it for 12 years, so I understand that, you know. Um, but I think that's cramming me pretty fast. Um, and uh, I spoke with uh, Judy Robertson, who's our uh, DLGF budget coordinator, and she mentioned that you guys always did it early. She said, but you're not going to be able to do that this year. Okay. So, so it has um, to be after you meet with them, then we can, you know, and it's not a regular meeting. It's a, it's right. a different okay. meeting that... And that budget I gave you, that we, that's what you need to give us. Right. So we can do our budgets, turn them in, present them to the council, and then at the meetings, every department head will get like 15 minutes typically, mm -hmm. half hour per department head to explain the budget to the okay. council. And, and, and the council would ask questions. Yeah. Sure. All that stuff. Okay. Thanks, Brian. I didn't, I didn't know that, that was the step. So. so we can decide a date at our next meeting. Yeah, sounds like I can do it. Mm -hmm. Put that so together next meeting. That's on the 20, what did you say? 20, 23rd. 23rd of our next July. meeting, July. So we December. can decide a date on that date for, yeah. the, for this budget meeting. Thank you. That was giving some more. <clears throat> okay. All right. Um, no other new business? We, we voted already on the ordinance of Mark Street. We voted on the ordinance vacating public sh uh, drive uh, Shelton. Um, we dismissed the one with Hearn, so we're on to department reports. Uh, Deputy Fire Chief, soon to be Fire Chief, Du Bois. Thank you. Almost not come, but it's his birthday, so he turned 60, he says he's not coming. <laughs> <laughs> I'll throw that out there. Uh, total runs for the month of 75, structure fires three in Richland Township, one in Rochester, one in Henry, one brush fire, uh, two unattended trash fires, Rochester Township and one in the city. Uh, I think Andy helped us with that one. Uh, vehicle fires, we had one that actually wasn't ours, but we still had to respond between Liberty and Allen Township and, and uh, Macy. Fire alarms, one, gas leaks, three, uh, medical runs, Rochester 34, Rochester Township 11, Richland 4, Newcastle 1. Um, rescue non-emergency was 1. We had kids stuck in a swing at the park. And then uh, accidents. Yeah, it happens. Accidents 3 in the city, uh, 5 in the township, 1 in Newcastle, and 2 in Richland. Announce the festivities on Friday. Oh, yes. And then Friday, uh, 1 o'clock, we'll start the uh, retirement process of uh, Fire Chief Butler. We'll have a pinning ceremony for some of the uh, full-time personnel that have not been sworn in yet. Um, as of this morning, he did not realize he was swearing them in. He did. I told him. I, <laughs> we went round and round about it. But, he's pushing uh, 60. He, he's pushing 60, so he He, he tried to tell me it was your responsibility. <laughs> and, <laughs> but I told him. I told him the last... I mean, a couple okay. different times, I'd like for him to do it, and I made it clear to You might that. reiterate, not like him do it, he will do it. Well, I basically told him that. Okay. Story. <laughs> I said, as your last like act, pushing back. as your last act, this is something you should do. So. Um, ambulance will change over the, uh, next Monday. I, I want to encourage you guys to come out, uh, especially at 1 o'clock. Uh, there's some things that Tom doesn't even know. Um, <laughs> so if you guys can swing out there at 1 o'clock. On Friday, um, precisely at the time, not only for the swearing in, but there is a couple, uh, something else. So, uh, it, if you can, you can get out there for a little bit. So, it's fire station. And then from three to five is 
kind of the retirement party, but the, uh, so anyway. Anything else? Tom know about the retirement party. He knows about the retirement yes. party. He just doesn't know about everything that's going on okay. earlier at one o'clock. So that's what happened. You don't come to city council meeting. Well, that's <laughs> that's I don't think you guys aren't going to tell him this till after Friday anyway. It will be on. Yeah, that, that, he, he, won't he won't know. He won't know. All right. Yeah. No, we'll so anyway, anyway, if anybody can come out there, it'd be great. Um, Chief shots. Uh, you've got my report, pretty basic. 27 accidents, 76 warnings, 47 offenses, 36 case reports, 519 calls for service, six towed vehicles, and 17 people incarcerated. Uh, we did have police in the park this past Saturday. Great event, not a great turnout. Um, we'll just keep trying, that's all we can do. Um, might, have been the, might have been the heat, we didn't advertise very well. Um, just, I, I thought it went well. Um, but just not a, a ton of people came out, and then there were only about 20, 20 or 25 people, I think, that showed up for the free movie on Sunday. So we're going to give it another shot next year and try to make it bigger and better. Do you have the dates already? No, no, no. Okay. Anything else? Nope, that's it. Um, we're going to jump her down to the committee reports. If you have anything else besides that, so uh, nobody from downtown partnerships like Family Association, uh, Amy getting on the area plan or adoption. Uh, we have the animal adoption area did that, so that's good. Uh, area plan, we basically just um, did a zoning amendment to the map from R1 to R2 for Keller and the presentation, and we did begin the discussion about solar. So um, looking at uh, having more. Um, detail in the solar ordinance or whatever they call it in the area plan. So that was a robust conversation, lasted an hour and a half, almost as long as the city council meeting, so um, it was good. Okay. Michael, thank you. passing out for you is information on the industrial park that we've been working on uh, for so long. Um, we had a, um, this is a uh, ready to project that we're going through. And we had a session earlier this week um, to discuss possible cuts and such. Um, right now we're sitting at $3 million as an ask for the ready to funds which means we will have to come up with a match at some point, uh, times three at least, between the city and the county. Um, but uh, that's somewhere in the future at this point. We still have to work through uh, some additional cuts. We have $3 million that we have to reduce total out of the uh, $35 million that we received. And the way that we did this uh, the other day, Monday, was um, we moved a lot of projects and programs over into the Lilly project money, uh, the $250 million that uh, they're going to release at some point. That money will be released over a period of time and it's going to come in drips and drabs. Um, the first thing that you've got is a couple weeks ago, we were awarded um, a grant, a $10,000 grant by Duke Energy. Uh, and as you see, I've included a schedule on it for you. Um, some of the project, some of the stuff that they're doing is uh, what's called a desktop review. And if you consider, this is probably a view from, of the project from like a mile up, uh, where it will tell you um, what kind of uh, the project it is. I've got, uh, by the way, we kind of, in order to come up with the name, we call it the Rochester South Industrial Park. Um, we have proximity maps, aerial maps, uh, electrical service territories, wetlands, floodplains, soil type maps, um, things like that that tell us at the end of the day, the site is a good site to locate. Um, we're going to have to do more studies, more detailed studies. That's what some of the ready money is going to be used on. And we'll have to do topographical boundary maps, all kinds of stuff like that that uh, go much, much deeper. Um, 
this is a as it says a good site uh, if you want any one of you can come down anytime you want to the office and I'll take you through the maps that we have I just didn't want to print them all up and, and everything because there's a lot um, there's a new court board in the in the boardroom there that I pin everything up we've got all kinds of visuals going so if you ever want to come down and find out what's going on let me know and uh, we'll sit and talk with you um, the other side of it what the uh, real quick what these two pages give you is the summary of what the program is and the bottom line is that uh, it's a it's an industrial site worth investigating working continuing to work on uh, we're trying to expand it on a continual basis just through the uh, working with other uh, property owners out there um, honestly I can I can't go too deep into it but I'll tell you we've already had uh, some interest in a building being put up we don't even have an industrial park which is kind of really nice you know, um, I've talked with state people, they're excited about it, and they feel that between the EV plants in Kokomo and the EV plant that's up in New Carlisle, we are in a position where that park's going to get filled pretty quickly. So that's, that's positive uh, work for us. The last two pages are dealing with the Lily monies, um, and if you forgive the rough notes that I took during the meeting, typing them all up. Uh, one will say blight reduction, the other will say arts and culture. Um, the blight reduction process, um, each county, we belong to a six county regional plan group, and each county was allowed to put in one building. And um, we had already put in the Putts building for ready to originally, so that became our contribution to the six buildings. Um, we only asked at that time about $31,000 to help stabilize and whatnot. If the money does come through, and I know there's a lot of work already being done on cuts, we'll switch to another building at some point, is how we'll handle that. Um, we're working, I've got a small committee that I've put together, and we're gonna work on um, creating a bigger district. What they want in this whole process is, um, if you go to the arts and, and culture page, it will say, tell you that each project must be sustainable. And by that, what they mean is, this is a long-term project uh, to talk about the art side of it real quick. They don't want murals, they don't want um, uh, something that you have to completely maintain uh, on an annual basis. They want something that's going to last 25 years and bring people into Fulton County. They don't want them coming from Cass or Howard or whatever. They want them coming from Illinois, Ohio, the rest of Indiana. Uh, so those projects are, are what we're working on too. I've created a small group of people, cultural uh, people who are working on uh, working on some really, really long-term projects. And what we will wind up doing is we'll be asking for millions of dollars, not hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars to, to come in and do both. This is both the blight and the arts and, and cultural stuff. So right now, that's about where we stand. Um, if you have any questions, and like I said, if you guys want any time, come on over. Just call me first, make sure I'm there. Seems like I can sit there and nobody shows up. I believe 35 people show up. You know, so that's all I'm saying. So. Thank you. Yep.
we're going to help them with that. Um, they also are actually doing the act actively marketing the uh, parks. Uh, they hired Jessica Schaefer to do that digital work marketing. So there's a new Facebook page and uh, various they're working on the website. <coughs> there, so some of the things that they've got going on. Uh, hard working group, a lot of discussion. Somebody came to me before the meeting and said, make sure you mention the steering committee they're trying to form. They are looking for volunteers to be part of the steering committee for this five-year plan. So if you're listening or watching on TV or in the audience and interested in being a volunteer to help with that, they'd be interested in working with you. So um, let me get that out there. I will say the beach is greatly improved from what it has been. We had a group come up in Kokomo Friday, and I was very proud of it. Dwayne went out, his guys went out, and they pressure washed the tables, pressure washed the pavilion area, raked the sand, turned off the water. Uh, I couldn't have been more proud of the way it looked. I mean, there wasn't any floating out there. Kids were kids had a ball. I still don't have the best base, but we're working on that too. So anyway, uh, a lot of people are putting some time and effort into making it as nice as we can make it at this point. So we'll keep working on it. So. All right, Mark, you got anything on the BZA? BZA meets uh, tomorrow night. There's four things on the agenda. One a little unusual it, uh, was passed a year ago and uh, it's set for a review <coughs> this year for a tattoo parlor business that's on Franklin Street. Um, and uh, two apartment complexes are going for variances tomorrow night, and a parking lot where you turn and go, if you're on uh, 4th Street and you're headed east, you turn where you turn to go to the recycling plant, the people on the south side of that 4th uh, Street want to turn that into a very big parking lot and fence the whole area. I'm not sure what the purpose is. Maybe we'll hear about that tomorrow, but that's the fourth thing. Um, to date, through 531, there have been uh, 46 transactions uh, with BZA that affect the city, and it's generated $1,381.14 a month. Uh, Council on Aging, we met uh, yesterday, and uh, it's a rather short meeting, but the important thing is uh, the council is the chamber member of the month for June, and Friday we're having a 50-year anniversary celebration uh, for the Council on Aging, and anybody can and wants to come by, it's uh, kind of an all-day thing. There's going to be activity all day long. So. It's okay, but it's okay. I think it's a problem to three or four. Okay. Fulton County Coral Club is performing. Fulton County Coral Club is performing. Friday. Friday. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay, Ruth, you anything on the hallways or anything else? No, they only meet every other month. Okay. So, next month. <coughs> next month. So, we wait for the excitement next month. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, you got any tree board? Or you I do. The tree board met June 3rd. They uh, approved the spring work order with Ugly Truck Tree Service. The amount was just over $13,000 for 20 tree removals and six prunes. So hopefully that'll get done on time and no uh, storm problems between now and then. The other big news is that uh, John Bowers resigned. And so as we mentioned earlier, we're down to two members and we need more. Keep going. The next meeting is July 2nd, right here. Okay. All right, that all, Brian? That's it. John, you got anything on the water board? The only thing that was significant at our last meeting was the fact they've raised the, uh, the starting wage to $19 an hour from 17 Couldn't hire anybody at 17 Everybody said they just couldn't, you know, 
the way they could live on that seventeen dollars an hour sounds pretty good but when, when it breaks down it's uh, thirty four thousand a year and in today's world that's pretty straight things so they're trying to get up to nineteen an hour to start and uh, that is that has come into effect I believe at the first of July that will go into effect. Uh, basically that was everything else is run fine plan. Good. All right. Anybody have anything else before we adjourn? Well thank you everyone up here for being progressive minded for the community for your service. Pleasure to be up here we get I think we're great unity of among us and we're trying to do the best we can for our community. So uh, thank you all for coming. Any motion to adjourn? Yep. <laughs> it's all favorite guy. <laughs> <laughs>